In this session we are going to look at how costs, revenues and profits interrelate with each other. We will explain the nature of cost volume profit or CVP analysis, learn how to calculate the break-even point and the margin of safety, calculate the contribution to sales ratio and what this means, calculate target profits and revenues, produce break-even charts and profit volume charts to help us to interpret cost and revenue data and we will also look at the limitations of CVP analysis for planning and decision making. Cost volume profit analysis is used to determine how changes in costs and volume affect a company's operating income and net income. There are a number of techniques that can be used to help us understand how changes in cost and volume impact on profits. The first thing that we are going to look at is the break-even point. As the name suggests, this tells us the volume of sales at which we make a zero profit. In other words, we break even. So to make a zero profit, we just need to ensure that our fixed costs are covered by the contribution that we make selling our product or products. Remember that contribution is calculated as sales revenue minus variable costs. So if we know the contribution we can make for each unit we sell, the selling price per unit minus the variable costs per unit, we can work out how many units we need to sell to cover the fixed costs. The break-even formula therefore can be defined as fixed costs divided by contribution per unit. This will tell us the volume of units we need to sell in order to break even. If there are multiple products within the business, we need to use a weighted average contribution per unit on the bottom of the formula, and this can be calculated by taking the total contribution and dividing through by the total volume sold to generate that contribution. We can then multiply the break-even volume by our selling price per unit to find the break-even revenue. We can also calculate the break-even sales revenue using the contribution to sales ratio, as we will see later in this video. We can extend the break-even formula further to find the margin of safety. This is the difference between our budgeted sales volume and the break-even sales volume, and this will therefore tell us how far our sales volume can fall before we start making a loss. We can calculate the margin of safety as an absolute figure or as a percentage. The absolute figure is as mentioned a moment ago, budgeted sales minus the break-even sales volume. To find the margin of safety percentage we would take this absolute figure and divide it through by the budgeted sales volume and then multiply up by 100%. The larger the margin of safety relative to the budgeted figures, the better, as this means that sales would have to drop some way before we start making a loss. Given that we have just mentioned the contribution to sales ratio, let's look at this next. The name of the ratio tells us how to calculate it. We take the contribution per unit and divide through by the selling price per unit. If there is more than one product in the mix, we cannot use this formula as the contribution and selling price per unit is likely to be different on a product by product basis. Instead, we need to use total contribution divided by total revenue, and this will generate a weighted average CS ratio covering all products. The CS ratio tells us how much of our revenue is converted to contribution to cover our fixed costs. The higher the CS ratio, the better as this means that we are generating a higher contribution per dollar of revenue. So if a product sells for $2 and has a CS ratio of 50%, this means that we have generated $1 of contribution per $2 of revenue, or 50 cents of contribution per dollar of revenue. Whereas if the CS ratio were 20%, we are only generating 40 cents of contribution per $2 of revenue and therefore we need to sell more units to generate the same overall total contribution to cover the fixed costs. I mentioned earlier that we can calculate the break-even revenue using the CS ratio. We do this by taking the fixed costs and instead of dividing through by contribution per unit, we now divide through by the CS ratio. Clearly, where there are multiple products in the mix, the CS ratio used needs to be the weighted average CS ratio as covered above. We can also extend the break-even calculations to find a target profit or target revenue. Let's look at target profit first. The formula will now become total fixed costs plus target profit divided by contribution per unit. 
This means that the contribution generated not only covers the fixed costs, but also the profit we are hoping to generate. The target revenue can be calculated as the target profit multiplied by the selling price per unit, or fixed costs plus target profit divided through by the CS ratio, in much the same way as we did for the break-even revenue. If there are a number of products to consider, we need to remember to use the weighted average CS ratio on the bottom of the formula. We are now going to move on and look at the break-even and profit volume charts that can be produced and how they help us to interpret the relationship between costs, revenues and profits. Let's first look at the break-even chart. The axes for this graph are monetary amounts on the y-axis and units sold on the x-axis. We are going to plot a line on this graph for total revenue at different sales volumes and a line on the graph for total costs at different sales volumes. The revenue line is fairly straightforward. We assume that the unit price does not change at different sales volumes and therefore the revenue line can be plotted by calculating the revenue at two different sales volumes using this fixed selling price per unit. So if we said the selling price was $10 per unit, this would give us revenue of $20,000 if we sell 2,000 units and $30,000 if we sell 3,000 units. The line will also cross through the origin of course no sales equals no revenue. With these figures we can plot the line on the graph. We now need to plot the total cost line. This will incorporate fixed and variable costs. Again we assume that the variable cost per unit does not change despite changing output levels. We also assume that fixed costs remain the same at all output levels. The first thing we need to do is mark the fixed cost on the graph. Even when we make no sales, we will still incur these fixed costs, so when the sales volume is zero, we can mark a point on the y-axis for these fixed costs. Let's say the fixed costs are $5,000. If the variable cost per unit is $4, then we can add on a further $8,000 at a sales volume of 2,000 units, and a further $12,000 at a sales volume of 3,000 units. This gives a total cost of $13,000 at 2,000 units and $17,000 at 3,000 units. These points can be plotted on the graph to create the total cost line. Notice that the total cost line does not start at zero but at the fixed cost of $5,000. Now that we have the total revenue and total cost lines both plotted on the graph, we can find the break-even point to be the volume at which the lines cross and therefore total revenue equals total cost, and neither a profit nor a loss is made. If we track this point back to the x-axis, we can see that the break-even point is at approximately 850 units. Using the formulaic approach already detailed, we can work out the break-even point to be $5,000 divided by $6. That's the selling price of $10 minus the $4 variable costs which gives us 834 units. We always round up so as to make sure a small profit rather than a small loss. Another point to note with regards to the graph is that at sales volumes to the left of the break-even point a loss would be made as total costs are higher than total revenue and sales volumes to the right of the break-even point would generate a profit as the total revenue is higher than total costs. The cost volume profit chart or profit volume chart, plots exactly what it says, profits made at different sales volumes. So using the same data that we used for the break-even chart a moment ago, we can produce a profit volume chart. We know at our break-even point of 834 units we make neither a profit nor a loss, and we know that when we sell no units at all we still incur $5,000 of fixed costs and will therefore make a loss of $5,000. So using just these two pieces of data we can plot the profit volume line as seen on the graph. We can see from the graph that at sales volumes lower than 834 units we would make a loss and at volumes above 834 units we would make a profit. If we have a budgeted sales volume we can also see the margin of safety on the graph. So if our budgeted sales are 2000 units the margin of safety falls between 834 units and 2,000 units, so it is 1,166 units. 
The chart we have just plotted is only relevant in single product scenarios, so we now need to look at the situation with regards to multiple products. The first thing we need to do is rank the products based on their CS ratio, and then much like we do in limiting factor analysis, we decide which product to make first, which to make second, and so on. We then calculate the total profit made at each output level, and chart this on the graph to find the break-even point. The easiest way to demonstrate this is with some numbers. A company makes and sells three products, Alpha, Beta and Gamma. We know that the revenue generated by Alphas is $12,000 and the variable costs of making them is $5,000. This gives a contribution of $7,000 and a CS ratio of 58.3%. If we perform the same calculations for Beta and Gamma, we can see that their CS ratios are 36% and 33.3% respectively. So we would rank alphas in first place, followed by betas, and then gammas. In order to plot the graph, we also need to know the fixed costs for the business. So let's assume that they are $9,500. This means that with a sales volume of zero units, we will make a loss of $9,500, and this gives us the starting point for our graph. We then need to know the cumulative profit we will make if we make the products in the order in which they have been ranked. So selling alphas generates $7,000 of contribution, giving us a net loss of $2,500. If we then sell betas, we generate a further $9,000 of contribution, and therefore we make an overall profit of $6,500. Making gammas generates another $7,000 of contribution, and now the profit becomes $13,500. We also need to know the cumulative revenue generated with each product. So selling alphas generates $12,000 of revenue. Adding on the revenue from betas gives us $37,000 in total. And adding on gammas gives us $58,000 in total. Plotting these points on the graph gives us a line that looks like the one shown here. Notice that the x-axis is now sales revenue rather than sales volumes. From the graph we can determine the break-even revenue to be around $16,000. If we had calculated the break-even revenue using the weighted average contribution as covered earlier in the video, this would have been the fixed costs of $9,500 divided through by the weighted average CS ratio. The total contribution generated by all three products is 7,000 plus 9,000 plus 7,000, giving us $23,000. And therefore the weighted average CS ratio is $23,000 divided by the total revenue of $58,000. The break-even revenue under this method is therefore... This is different to the $16,000 calculated by the graphical approach, as this calculation ignores the ranking process and gives all products the same priority. The graphical approach is much more accurate and tells us that we can break even at a lower sales revenue if we prioritise production, as we will ensure that we maximise the contribution being made and therefore we cover the fixed costs more quickly. The final area that we need to cover on this video is the limitations of these various techniques, some of which I have already touched on throughout the video. All of the methods assume that fixed costs are constant at all output volumes and that there are no stepped fixed costs. The methods also assume that variable costs and selling prices do not change as output and sales volumes change. This implicitly means that we are assuming the efficiency and productivity are also constant at all output levels and that there is no learning curve effect or price demand relationships. We are also assuming that whatever we produce we sell so that there are no changes in our inventory levels. And finally there is an assumption that fixed and variable costs can be split and that there are no semi-variable costs within the business.